Hello rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbitals Rocket Shop. I got some, some pretty good news for you. Uh, we are building the giant speaker rocket and frankly I can just say to you, more rockets are coming. Let's talk more about that. So what's this uh, thing about uh, new rockets? Well, frankly, um, we want to sort of, of uh, hit two birds with one stone. We've learned that uh, during the process of building this giant speaker rocket, we also realized that it is a huge project. And uh, frankly, we want to finish it quicker. The other part is that we want to, uh, to get a chance to introduce even more people to rocketry. So I think we figured out a way to do, uh, to, do the, to do this simultaneously. So for that, we have basically made the Recruits project. The Recruits project is, uh, was actually based on a very special invitation we got all the way from Portugal. Um, Copenhagen Suborbitals participated in the first uh, native European student rocket competition on university level last year. It was a great success. And uh, frankly, uh, the Portuguese space agency were so happy with us that uh, they kind of invited us to come next year and do a demonstration slash inspiration rockets. Now, naturally, if CS brings a rocket to Portugal, we can't uh, compete in the competition. It's for students after all. But we could uh, take something very interesting along and then fire it down there and let people be inspired. So this is where we're going. And secondly, while doing such a demonstration slash uh, inspiration rocket, it's also a great chance to introduce new young people to rocketry. So this is why the uh, Recruits project came together and a Recruits rocket, of course. So the Recruits team, let's go meet them. My name is Adam. I, uh, I'm an electrical engineer by trade and I work at a startup in Lundby building uh, power amplification systems for musicians. Here I'm um, doing machining and uh, electronics design for, uh, for the rocket. My name is Oliver. I'm a volunteer here at CS. I joined CS a couple of months ago and I'm a newly educated bachelor in technology management and marine engineering. In Danish that's Maskinvesta, uh, which is quite fun. I, uh, the things that I do here is I do CAD work and I uh, do milling and machine work as well. At this, on this project, I have been doing uh, a lot of the fluid systems. Been one of the instigators on this project to, uh, to get it off the ground with uh, Jacob and recruited one of my uh, best friends, which is Batten. Hello, my name is Batten Sawyer. Um, my background is I work as a machine master uh, for a company out in Batrop. Uh, I mostly work with optimizing production and improving production equipment. Here on the rocket, I've been working a lot with the actual mechanical construction of it and doing a lot of the CAD for all of the parts. And then I've been in charge of a, <laughs> one of the people who start other people working on a lot of the component parts. My name is Pelle, I am a third year high school student and I am primarily working on the electronics with the rocket with designing auxiliary PCBs and soldering them, testing of course. And then I've also been helping with building stuff, with uh, doing jobs on the mill, for example. Hello, my name is Josh. I study business economics on the uh, Nurse Bok and I work uh, with the wire harness. It's essentially the thing that connects all the electrical components together of the rocket, so it works in a, a system. And also have uh, been a bit around the place, also soldering stuff, sawing components together and um, drilling holes for the structural system of the rocket. Hello, my name is Eric and in my daily life I'm a third year high school student. On the recruit project I am the camera person. You won't see much B-roll of me because um, I'm behind the camera most of the time. 
Hi, my name is Thomas. I am a physicist and I work as a mathematician and a teacher at a gymnasium. And at Copenhagen Suborbitals, I have been working on welding the inner engine parts, uh, the parts that function for cooling the engine. That's basically it. Hi, my name is Valdemar and I'm a third year high school student. And I happen to be on this uh, recruits project for CS. Uh, I'm cur currently working on the uh, wire harness for the electronics. My name is Alba, I'm 18 years old and I'm a high school student at Hustle Astro Gymnasium Lundby and I'm currently on my third year. For the recruit rocket I have been working on the airframe design along with producing the different components for the rocket. My name is Lucas, I'm a satellite engineer at the astrophysics department of DTU Space. At the Recruit project, I manage the system integration and software development on the, on the rocket, and I'm currently working on the pressurization system. Hi there, my name is Marian. Um, I've been joining uh, Copenhagen Suborbital for about three months now, and um, my main reason for doing so is just because I wanted to learn more about rocket, uh, rocketry uh, engineering. And, uh, and because it's a passion of mine since I was a kid and I'm very curious about uh, rockets. Uh, in my daily life I work with digital marketing. I'm a, um, a digital marketing specialist. I work with advertisement, advertising and uh, performance marketing. And um, yeah, my, uh, my main tasks here at uh, Copenhagen Suborbital is to find sponsors and help people here uh, achieving their, uh, their goals with, in building uh, their rockets. We've already been at work on the rocket for a while. In fact, the project started all the way back in late February. Here is a quickfire rundown of what we've been working on since then. We cut our tank sections with our long seam pipe cutter, which was then modified a bit to become a long seam pipe welder. We then used it to weld the end caps onto the tanks. To make sure that the tanks are strong enough, we pressure tested them up to 70 bars and measured their deformation. We also tested the burst discs, which will protect our tanks by bursting first if the pressure gets too high inside. We milled the interface flanges that sit at the end of each section of the rocket. These make the rocket modular so it can be taken apart and assembled again for easier transportation. We cut the structural spars to length and milled them. Then threaded blocks were inserted into the end for mounting to the flanges. The electronics design is well underway, with the first revisions of PCBs having been soldered and tested, and second revisions already on the way. We made a scale drawing of the rocket on a piece of wood, which we used to lay out the wire harness that connects all the electronics together. We've been producing 8 new BPM-5 engines, using parts we had left over. These will have some upgrades, including new injector plates that are being 3D printed in one piece by digital metal, as well as some optimizations and weight savings here and there. We're hoping to be able to run these engines at double the normal chamber pressure, that is 30 bars. With that said, here's a quick rundown of how the rocket currently looks. So we start out here at the top of the rocket, where we have nothing right now, because here the recovery section will be, that is the nose cone with the parachute and the drogue chute. But those aren't made yet, so it's not here. Moving down, we have our DPR section, which is the dynamic pressure regulation. This is a, uh, a carbon fiber tank that will contain nitrogen under 300 bars of pressure. In this section, we'll have the valves which regulate the pressure in the tanks during the flight. So moving down the rocket a bit, we have our tanks. We have the fuel tank and the oxidizer tank here. For the fuel, we use 75% ethanol which, uh, with 25% water. And for the oxidizer, we use cryogenic uh, liquid oxygen. So down here at the bottom of the rocket, we have our valve section, which will contain four valves in total. That's uh, two valves for each propellant, which is a pre-stage valve and a main stage valve. Because when we start the rocket engine, which is a BPM-5, we need to have some uh, lower flow in the beginning to not blow out the igniter. And then when we have uh, good combustion in the engine, we open the main valves to get full throttle out of the engine. And last but not least, uh, here the fin can will be, and the fin can will contain the BPM-5 engine as well as have the fin on the outside, of course. 
If everything goes according to plan, this recruits initiative will be a recurring thing within Copenhagen Suborbitals, providing an opportunity for people with an interest or previous experience in rocketry to come and learn the ropes by building a simpler rocket before helping to build Spica in the future. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we'll make it to Yurok this year. Even though we've been working at a breakneck pace, there is still too much to be done before we're ready. Instead, we're targeting a launch sometime in the first half of 2022. So that's about it for this time. You can look forward to a static test of the rocket in the future. And um, you can also read more about this project on our website. The link will be down in the description. That is all for now. So as always, thank you for watching and supporting. If you don't want to miss any of our future updates, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so we can see you next time when we get one step closer to space. The reason we're getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you enjoy watching these insider videos on building a space program and you would like to become an even bigger part of it, you can help us out by going over to our website www.copsup.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation. We all do this for free in our spare time, so you'd be surprised how much every little bit helps. And thank you if you feel like what we do and share is interesting.